Well, unfortunately, he had a great fall, so since it's got to get rebuilt anyways, let's do a tutorial. This is how to make a robot that's completely controlled by ChatGPT. First things first, we're going to print a new frame because I broke the old one. Once that's finished, we're going to move on to the wheel motors. We have two on each side and they are spliced together in parallel, so red to red, black to black. The motor controller has two outputs, one for each side, so we're going to run two motors from each side into each output of the motor controller. Just got to put the bolts into the motors, run those through the frame, and then once they're in, we can put the uh, nuts on the other side and really secure the motors down. Next up is installing the servos that control moving the camera around. You want to put the servo into this little slot on the front with the wire going backwards. And I actually had to take the front right wheel off to be able to get both of the servo screws on. You'll want to take a 16th inch drill bit and put uh, widen the holes on the servo arm so the servo screws will fit into them nicely that way you can mount the camera arms to them go ahead and do the same thing to all the holes on the camera arm next you can start putting them together you want to put the servo arm on the longer side of the square at the end of the arm Mount it to the servo with the middle screw. And now your robot can look up. Let's attach the second servo now. Make sure the wire is facing backwards. Screw it down with the servo screws. And now we can get started on the head. I'm using that same drill bit to widen all the holes to make it easy to screw stuff onto it. Depending on which camera you use, you might have to edit the STL file for this. The one I'm using just has a specific width, which might not be the same as yours. And here's what a finished head looks like. Now we just need to add the screws to mount it. We're gonna go ahead and put them in a little bit so they're sticking out the bottom some. That way it's easier to al align it on the servo arm. And check it out, he's ready to start roaming around and looking around once he has a brain. If only I had a brain. Let's give it one. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, but that's only because it's what I had on hand. I'd like to use a Pi 4. We're gonna use that little drill bit to widen these holes and make it easier to mount this. We'll put in a couple screws. I only have two screws in on the diagonal. It's good enough. I mean, it's not in a rocket or something, you know, it's not gonna endure high stress situations. If it does, well, it's not where it's supposed to be anyways. Go ahead and get the camera hooked up now. Next up is the battery supply. Hopefully we don't fry the pie. We're using a WaveShare UPS hat for two 18650 batteries. It can charge the batteries as it's running the pie and uh, run the pie on just the batteries or the power. Sheaf life. Make sure it's turned off before you plug it in to the left if you're looking down on it. Next, we're going to add the WaveShare audio hat and a speaker. The audio hat has microphones on it, and then we just got to plug the speaker in. I extended the length of the wire for the speaker and added hot glue there so the solder points on the speaker wouldn't break. Putting the speaker in the speaker mount is pretty easy. You just put the wire through the ring and then put the screws through the ring some until they're sticking out the back side, and then put the speaker and the ring up to the rest of the mount and start screwing the screws together until they go into those holes you're gonna have a little bit of room left between the ring and the actual mount stand but that's okay 
So we'll go ahead and mount the audio hat and then just set the speaker to the side for now. Next we need to add a way to control the motors and servos and get data from the sensors. We're not going to use this. This is what I've been developing with. I don't want y'all to have to go through making something like this. So we're going to use this. It has Bluetooth and motor driver built into the Arduino. So that way we don't have to worry about all that jumble of wire on top of the robot. First we need to install the legs for the Arduino mount. We're going to drill out all the holes on them just to make it easier to screw into. And then drill out the holes on the bottom. Start screwing the legs in. Part of the leg with the little arm that comes out, the little tab that comes out, that uh, goes towards the center of the robot. Just like you see here. And now the other side. Now we're going to drill out the holes to hold down the Arduino to the Arduino mount. We want to make sure that we give enough room for the speaker holder to be back here. Once you have it lined up where you like, go ahead and drill out the holes. I'm only doing two holes on mine, the diagonals. And then start putting in the speaker mount screws. Just put them in part of the way. That way you can, you can line up the speaker holder with it easily. Now put all four screws into the Arduino mount, put them in part of the way. That way we can align it with the legs below. And then just start screwing it down onto the legs, making sure the screws line up with the holes. Mount the Arduino to the two holes you drilled. Okay, let's begin hooking everything up to the Arduino now. First is the servos. We're gonna hook those up to pins nine and 10 on the digital pin side. Next, let's hook up the wheel motors. We're gonna attach them to these two connectors right over here. And I'll have to extend the length of the wires on the other side because they don't reach with this new board. Plus, one of the wires came unsoldered from the motor. So let's get it fixed up. We're gonna cut some new wires to the correct length, two black ones and two red ones, and go ahead and strip them on each side. Next, unsolder the old wires and solder on the new wires. And then connect black to black and put it on the negative side of the uh, motor driver terminal and the red red and on the positive side of the motor driver terminal. Next, let's connect the ultrasonic sensor four wires, positive ground, trigger and echo. We're gonna run trigger and echo to pins 12 and 13. After that, we're gonna hook up the battery. So we need to extend the wire length on the battery. We're gonna do one wire at a time and tape it up. That way we don't have any uh, short circuits while we're doing this. Here's what your battery should look like. Make sure you keep those tips separate. And now we can mount the battery in the robot. Make sure you do red to positive, black to negative. And then you're done building the robot. The battery fits in there fairly snugly, so it's good enough for doing experimentation. This concludes part one. On the next video, I'll show you how to set up all the software and code and get this thing running.